Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Desert Sky Adventures and welcome back to Tombstone. Today, we are heading south, about an hour south to be exact, to the border town of Douglas, Arizona, a place that I've never been to before. But my goal for today is to check out the site, see what there is to see around the town of Douglas, and I'm inviting you guys to come along with me. So let's go right now and check out the historic town of Douglas, Arizona. <laughs> Douglas, Arizona is a small border community with over 100 years of rich history. Founded in 1901 and incorporated four years later, Douglas was first established as a smelter site for the thriving copper mines in Bisbee. The town has about 16,000 residents and is about 50 miles away from Tombstone. And like I mentioned earlier, I'd never been to Douglas before, so I wasn't really sure what was there. There was one historic point of interest that I wanted to see right off the bat, and that was the historic Gadsden Hotel which is going to be our first stop today. The Gadsden opened for business in November of 1907, and the hotel soon became a meeting place for cattlemen, ranchers, miners, and businessmen. Unfortunately, on February 7, 1928, fire ripped through the hotel, leaving nothing but the elevator cabin, the marble staircase, and marble columns. The hotel was immediately rebuilt using the same architects, but on a grander scale with no expense spared. At the time, not many hotels had an electric lift that could reach every floor. In fact, to this day, it is one of the oldest annually operated elevators still in use west of the Mississippi. The hotel was also one of the first to feature individual bathrooms in all 160 air-cooled rooms. Upon entering this lobby, the first thing you notice is the impressive staircase made of white Italian marble and massive pink marble columns. The column capitals are hand-layered with 24 karat gold leafing, to add to its beauty, the window at the top of the grand staircase was designed and crafted by Ralph Baker. The stained glass mural depicting the southwest runs a full 42 feet long and 6 feet tall. It was still a bit early in the day for the Saddle and Spur Tavern to be open, but the good people at the Gadsden let me take a look inside anyways. Right across the street from the Gadsden was the Last Supper Museum, which boasts one of the largest, if not the largest, collection of Last Supper depictions on the planet. Some of these Last Supper depictions are very traditional. Others, not so much. Admission to the Last Supper Museum is free, but they do accept donations, so make sure you leave one if you decide to come here. Along with some really cool suits of armor, they've got every depiction of The Last Supper you could possibly imagine. In fact, I'm told they've got much more than this that's not even on display yet. They've got a Star Wars Last Supper. A Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Last Supper. Children's Breakfast Cereal Cartoon Mascot Last Supper, a Peanuts and Snoopy Gang Last Supper, and I don't even know what this is. This man's name is Kiyoki Skinner, and he lives just over the border fence in Agua Prieta, Mexico. He also does tours of Agua Prieta, which start in Douglas. We didn't have enough time to go into Mexico today, but we will do that again sometime in the future. Me in Mexico? Okay. And it has been quite some time since I've taken a ride in an old school Volkswagen Bug. Okay. And Jenny Jordan. We hopped in the Bug and took off to see the sights of Douglas. Apparently I had some kind of microphone issue going on here. I'm not sure why, but it'll clear up in just a few minutes. Wow. Another friend here. This is the old Negro church here. And uh, a friend of uh, there's a, a couple, she's Japanese and he's from Canada, but they, uh, they were artists working in Oakland, California, and things got so expensive in Oakland that they just couldn't live up there anymore. Yeah. So they started hunting around for a place to relocate to do their art, and somehow they, they ended up here in Douglas. And so they bought this old church, which is like 8,000 square feet, 
and uh, and they have an air. They built it really. That's real slick. Airbnb upstairs, and then they moved all their art artwork and everything downstairs. Wow. And that's that's done real well. They've done. There are always people in there. But from the outside, it's really a sleeper. You know, you yeah. look at you look at you. Don't, you don't even think what the hell's going on there. But it's it's really really it's slick. pretty cool looking. Yeah, it's slick on the inside. It's real nice. I come here because this is what has uh, changed the complexion of, well, it changed the complexion of Agua Prieta. Um, I don't have all my, I've got props, i got pictures, but um, I, I worked for the Arizona Republic for a number of years, and, mm-hmm. and uh, I was working for him when uh, Chapo Guzman's first drug tunnel was discovered, and I, I was li- I live about 18 blocks that way on the fence on the, on the Mexican side. And mm-hmm. uh, so I, I'm, and I had the juice bar, so I was really aware of what was going on in the city. And uh, anyway, right here was a vacant lot. Straight across there was a vacant lot. And these guys from Sinaloa came in and they paid $90,000 cash for that vacant lot. And the next step was to come over here and uh, mix it up with the Douglas people because they needed something straight across from that house. There was The, the guy was going to build a house. That's what he ostensibly he said. I'm going to build my house there. Mm-hmm. And so they started doing construction of this house. And so he had to come over here and and buy something directly across from it for where the tunnel was going to come up. So this was a really bad business here. This was a lumber yard and a ready mix company mm-hmm. here. And, uh, it wasn't doing very good, so they, you know, when they heard there was big money around, they, you know, they were ready to sell. So he bought, I don't know what he paid, but uh, they pay, They bought this. So once they bought this lumber yard here uh-huh. and the ready mix company, they were ready to start building the tunnel. And uh, so the house started going up over there, and there was a big hole in the backyard, and he, and the guy, the the guys said, oh, they're going to build a swimming pool here. Well, that big hole in the backyard started filling up with dirt little by little because it was dirt that was coming out of the tunnel here. Right. The, the significance of all this is uh, this was Chapo Guzman's first tunnel. Right here. He's right here. Wow. He built lots of tunnels. Yeah. He built them in Tijuana. He built them all. Up. Everywhere he went, he had tunnels. Yeah. Because he used them as an escape route where when the cops were getting close to him, yeah. he'd use tunnels to get out and get out of the way. So, but this is his first one. So this is the, like the paradigm huh. for, and all, all when you see all his tunnels, they all they're very similar. To this this first one, this yeah. first one, cement floor. They they had mining cars with rubber wheels on them. That's what they pushed the the dope out from there, and the money went back the other way. Right. But uh, I got my hands on some DEA documents, and uh, they estimate about seventy tons of cocaine came through here wow. in, in a matter of months because it was only functioning a few months yeah um but uh so anyway uh this this tunnel got built we're talking 1990 mm-hmm. and uh and as i say they estimate about 70 tons went through and they were running it out of here on flatbed trucks each flatbed had a false floor about that big and they got a ton of coke yeah. in each truck that went out and so uh, it didn't take long for that to mount up and then there was so you know it produces so much money the drug trafficking stuff it, it's money is really bulky i mean it's a real problem what you do with all this money you just can't yeah you know you, you can't take a million bucks into the bank and ap and say i want to deposit this right so what they do is they run it through what they call Casa de Cambios, which are exchange houses. And when you go to AP, they're just everywhere. Yeah. They're just on every corner where you can go in. For example, a, a citizen like you saying you, you're going over there, you want to go shopping or you want to go eat, you play, you got need you need some pesos, you need some Mex- Mexican money. Mm-hmm. So you go into a Casa de Cambio, you exchange $20, $30, $10, they give you pesos. But that's the ostensible what they're doing. I mean, the big thing is they're taking large sums of money and getting it into the economy 
and getting it into things and stashing it for these drug cartels. Uh-huh. Well, in this case, it's the Sinaloa cartel that runs Agua Prieta. And, uh, and so the money thing, when the, when the tunnel was functioning, uh, Chapa Guzman's brother got nailed down here at the port one day. He was driving a Ford Bronco back into AP. And I don't know how they got the tip, but they got a tip that he had something in the car. So they searched him and get 1.8 million cash wow. stashed in that Bronco. So it's crazy. there's just money going, uh, you know, yeah. there's just a lot of money going south. When they had a witness to say there were 10 planes from Colombia flew in a week in El Prieta with, wow. coke, with coke. So that's, that's the quantity of product we're talking about yeah. that, was, that was coming through here. So anyway, uh, it got busted in May of 1990, uh-huh. and the city has taken it over, Douglas City. And I have gone before the city council with a proposition to let me turn this tunnel, because it's still open. I mean, they didn't close it up. On the Mexican side, they plugged it with cement, uh-huh. just the entrance in the house. Oh, the, the interesting thing in the house was uh, um, in the family room of the house over there was a pool table. And uh, they had it on hydraulics. Chapo used a lot of hydraulics. His engineers liked hydraulics. So you uh, out in the yard, you turn a spigot, look like a water spigot, but that made the pool table go up in the air, and that's how you got down into the tunnel. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And in here, it just came up, and it, this is a truck, what they call a truck wash mm-hmm. in here, and it was just a huge grate. And yeah. That, that's where the tunnel came up in here. But, uh, wow. yeah, it was... a. Uh, extremely lucrative and really launched Chapo's career as a as a Sinaloa drug trafficker. I mean, it's really, this rule has really got him going, this tunnel right here. The dot guys that are dealing with it right now, this truck is just coming out. And what they do is they, uh, we'll let him get out of the way so I can show you uh, what they do. Any commercial stuff coming out through Douglas comes through here. Now, see that truck with the arm like this on it? Yes. That's an x-ray machine. Hmm. Okay. So, any commercial stuff coming out of Mexico, they line them up single file right here, and that truck goes up and down. And uh, and they can look into, see anything irregular shit yeah. going on inside, inside that truck. And so, you know, not a bad system. Okay walkway there. That's where you come out of Mexico as a pedestrian. And these are the automobile exits. These people coming through. These guys have probably been on a whole long haul. They've got to see what kind of plates they have. I see a lot of these guys like this with really nice BMW bikes coming out. Mm-hmm. They've been traveling in Mexico on their motorcycles. Power lines, but he got all this steel. This used this steel used to be at uh, at the Atlanta Olympics, and huh. he got th- uh, it went to Phoenix from Atlanta, and the guy heard about Herod's project down here and just donated all this steel. But this all this all assembles yeah. into a big arch, and uh, all he had to do was just get it down here. He had to pay he had a lot of money to get it down here from Phoenix, but. This is what I'll show you where it's gonna go. This he bought this vacant lot right here. Mm-hmm. That's where that huge sculpture arch is gonna go. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's, and you see he's got the he's got the, this heavy shit already built. I mean, that's a lot of cement he put in that hole there. Yeah. With those bolts on top, so it's all gonna it's mount right up. It's gonna mount right up, as in a big arch. It's going to be the it's going to be the parking place for the Art Car Museum, which is right here. What's that look to it? Art Car World is a museum that I've heard of, but hadn't had a chance to visit yet. And as I understand it, they're not completely done with the inside of the building, but they're still good enough to let me take a look around and see what they've got so far. I'm gonna be giving you an, an 
Fun fact about Art Car World, it is owned and operated by Harrod Blank. Well, you might not recognize that name, but he was actually one of the killer clowns from outer space. Okay. True story. And you're Sasha, was it? Yep. I'm Sasha. Sasha, okay. Yeah. I'm Dave, nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Thanks I for showing us around. Perfect. So the guy was outside, his name is Harrod Blank, uh -huh. and he was born uh, in California. His mom was an artist from New Orleans, and mm -hmm. his dad was a filmmaker from California. So he grew up with two parents, uh, creative people as his parents. Right, <laughs> so right. So he was kind of, you know, he was born with that. So when he was 16 years old, uh, he saved us some money, both from mom and dad, and then he bought a bag for 600 bucks. But he didn't like the way it looked because it was too plain, yeah. and too simple. So he started painting stuff, and doing some designs of the car and a lot of people were impressed and every time everyone sees whatever he does they would come and say wow this is amazing yeah so kind of motivated to him up until he had this whole car covered so he had this car for college after college uh this was the first car at burning man i don't know if you know burning man yes yeah so this was the first car i fly in 1991 in reno and wow. Uh, ever since he's been working on art cars, mm -hmm. so they kind of came up with the squad, and he actually made a movie about the car. He made two movies about the car, in fact. And after that, the art car community kind of blew up. Yeah. So back in the nineties, everyone started making art cars. A lot of people inspired, and he had oh my god, the name came from people just uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the name came from, you know, people, every time they see the car, they're like, ooh, nice, oh my god. Right. And yeah, it's, it runs, it's straight legal, we can literally start the ignition right now and take it outside, it works perfectly. Wow. Mm. And then, uh, so much design and stuff like that. Yeah. That's the car museum. <laughs> yeah, so when he made a movie back in the days, uh, oh yeah, I think I had get some gloves. Oh, you're okay. Uh, I think I'm a yeah, right. so when he made the movie about the car, a lot of people, he brought his father's equipment, made a movie about it, and a lot of people knew him now as a filmmaker, but not as an artist. He called himself an artist, but every time they'd ask him for interviews in New York Times, other places, they'd be like, hey, how a blank a filmmaker? And then you'd show up with a decorated bag. So the car kind of felt absolute, and he had to come up with another plan to make a car that kind of told him as, an, as a filmmaker. So that's why he ended up making the camera van, which is this one. We almost 2,000 cameras wow and it's been all over the places almost all continents new york china they even did a parade in uh england london the late king of england wow yeah this is his famous truck mm. Never seen anything like that before. Me too. When I first came here, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, so all these cars are doing a minimum of one. Oh, it took two years to make this one. And some of the cars are checking out, but I'm going to show you. We're looking at a minimum of one year right now of working on the car. Mm. Covered with all different types of cameras. <laughs> yep, my favorite is the uh, muscle plate, which is by the corner there. <laughs> yeah, so 
after the in some uh, light meters. So uh, with the car, I went to something to a company and mm -hmm. used to put on the flash tube suit. <laughs> I was told that this was the flash way before you know everything. Yeah. Modernized, so all the flash tube that he was using his entire life. He kept on saving them, and some of them came from his dad to be safe with them. And it takes him a lot of time to put on, and it's really happy. So, you yeah, go for events, put on this thing, you park his car next to the car, and next to the to the doors of the gate. And when he starts feeling people, like, hey, welcome, welcome, and stuff like that. Mm. That's a V8 Chevy engine that was converted to a bike. Yeah. Uh, the lead was made out of it. What happens if I make a bike out of a car? So she designed everything and welded everything and engineered everything. And she came up with a bike. She did two. Wow. Both running and good to go. Done that. It's interesting. And we have a beamer made out of bubble heads. So we, uh, the car is moving. Yeah. <laughs> kind of shake and stuff like that. Come on, you can't be in that shape. Okay, yeah, so we wash. So those cars, uh, they've been to Burnwin, some have been in Guinness Book, some have been on TV shows. Yeah. Oh, they're all music boxes? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's one of the music boxes. This is all hand painted, every single line of the hand painted. Wow. Mm. I thought it was a wrap when I first saw it, but no. That's what I thought too. So if you look tight, you see the different brush strokes. Yeah. Mm. And you Yeah. <laughs> so you know some of the guys are like, yeah, I know this.
Inspired. Yeah. And all these are drivable? Yep. And street legal. That is crazy. That's fuel box. What's that? The name of the car is called the Bats Fuel Box. Oh, right. Layer of brass, and before we put some stuff on top, they rebuilt it in fifteen thousand dollars worth of coins. How much? Fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen? Yep. Fifteen k of coins. Wow. Before they said they put stuff on top. All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap it up today for our look at Douglas, Arizona. There is so much history here that I could not get it all in in one day. So we'll definitely be back to check out more sights and sounds of Douglas, Arizona. But until then, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do us a favor, hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, from Douglas, Arizona, we'll see you down the road.